Fire Breeding Advisor and Area Manager here in the South East. And today we're down in South Kilkenny, here on the farm of Seamus Knox, Seamus and Louise, and the Ballygowan herd of Pedigree Holstein Frisian Cows. And we're going to have a chat with Seamus just about his journey. He's, as you can see around here, there's been a lot of expansion over the last number of years. So maybe Seamus, you might talk to us a little bit about the herd and where it's come from. And yeah, yeah. Where, where, you know, the, the progress or the expansion over recent times. Uh, so look, we started off milking from my father's time 40 cows and we were milking. We increased gradually then when quotas were up to about 60. And then in the last couple of years then we, we br kind of brought the numbers up. We were finishing a lot of cattle and we brought the numbers up to 120. And that was the plan to stay around that, but as the, the cattle thing didn't go good, so we decided to change. And with the last three or four years now, we're building up cow numbers, so we're at 300 now at the minute, and that's that's as far as we're going. We're happy with that, so it is a case of culling now and increase the herd and, or um, improve the herd. So that's kind of the the run of it, like. Okay, and the, the pedigree holds in fridge is the cow of choice. It is, yeah. We well, look, we start. When I left Kildalton, we 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 got the herd. We'll say we started classifying, and gradually they all became pedigree. So look, we're working from there, and it started off with a base of British Friesian, and gradually behind a bit of Holstein, and now the majority of the herd, with the exception of maybe two or three cows, is probably 60-70% Holstein. So that's the run of what it is now at the minute. Okay, and I'd say some of the bulls that you would have used over the years that left the biggest stamp, would you think, on the herd? Yeah. Well, look, the British region was a, was the start there, and it was kind of, we start, we weren't doing our own AI, so like we were kind of dependent on where we could get straws, and we started off like a bit of New Zealand bull, Keith and Hugo, later on a bit of Jordan Ayer, and then some of the first Oman sons now, they were hard to get, but we kind of got a bit of CKK Otto and there's still cows there in the herd belonging to them, but that was kind of the change over and like, it's the same type, we don't go now for a big cow, it's kind of a, a medium sized cow, the farm is very hilly, so we want a cow that lasts and kind of go then for a mixture of EBI and milk and good solids, that's kind of the base of what we're working on now, so. Ne nearly all Irish bred bulls, the high EBI Irish bulls. Yes, with with the last, oh God, with the last 20 years, it's all Irish bred bulls, all Irish bred bulls, like so. And tell me, Seamus, what would the herd EBI be at the minute? I think around 179, 180 now at the minute, so it is, I know it's changed around a little bit, but we're genomic testing everything with the last, probably, seven or eight years, so. Bulls and heifers. Bulls and heifers, so okay. everything has been done, like we'd sell a scatter of, pedigree bull calves then as well, or yearling bulls as well, so no, with genomic tests ever, and it kind of gives us a better, a better kind of something to work on. Yes. Uh, so that's it, yeah. accuracy that's it, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. And tell me, production, performance-wise, what level is the herd at today? Uh, uh, 1,600 gallons last year, roughly, and 3.6 protein, and I think 4.3 butter fat. That's what the herd that's is now. That's an expanding herd. That's and I look, there's probably 20% of my first calf or 20% or second calf or so. There's, there's a, a lot of young cows there, like, so, yeah, no, hey, we're happy enough, like, about 580 kilos of solid, so we get around to 600, look, that's kind of what we're aiming for. So okay. that's what we're one of. So. And tell me then, feed-wise... Uh, what's, what's the diet? Mainly grass, I presume. Mainly grass. We buffer feed um, up to maybe the middle of April, depending on when the cows grow. We usually buffer feed up to the middle of April, the, include good silage, a bit of beet and a bit of soya, and then they begin two kilos in the parlour, and then we start buffer feeding in October, maybe mid-October. With the last few years now, we, we milked through, milked late calfers and cows not in calf, and kept it going through, so... Look, with the fat and protein, it is working out handy enough, and we have help, so it's not a big ordeal like it would have been years ago. Ah, yeah, so and that's the. What kind of, what level of meal would you come to in the year? Would you, would you feed it depends on, a on meal? Or? Totally depending on the year. Like as I said, we'd be feeding two to three kilos a day, but look, half of our farm is heavy ground and half of it is dry ground. And on a wet year, we could tail one way, and on a dry year, we could tail, so it, we'd be probably definitely between three quarters of a ton and a ton of meal a year. I remember being here in 18 in the drought, 
That's right. And I remember there was a panic on to get silage cut because it was actually disappearing off the fields yeah, outside. Yeah, yeah, no, that's just the type of ground. Like I said, half the ground is like that. There's just there's very little clay on top of the on top of the ground. So, like I said, if you do get two or three weeks warm weather, it just vanishes. So I do so. That's, uh, and you've you've a lot of heifers served recently. Is there a change to winter milk on the horizon? No, not really. Just we just split up. We have a lot of heifers coming through, and so just to split up the calf and of them, just to have not to have them all calf, and because we'd be hoping to sell a lot of heifers next year as well. So at least to we'll split it up a bit and make it easier. And the fact we're milking through all winter, they'll fit in and they'll sit in. Like as I said, so it's calf not a quieter time, of quieter time of the year. Look, as I said, ah, look, there's help around. Like so, it's not a not a big ordeal. So it didn't, and heifers are quieter as well. So I know. Hey, look, as I said, we'll see how it goes anyway. So yeah. that's uh, and I suppose over in, in recent years, you've become synonymous with bull, breeding bulls and putting bulls into AI. Ah, oh, well, sure. Look, a bit of luck, a good bit of luck. But um, oh, we're after being lucky with the scatter of bulls. So we are, on, well, like as I said, we kind of we're lucky enough. They're going into all, all the three AI stations, and like as I said, hey, we started off with. Moiley, he was the first bull we went into Eurogene and like I said, there's a lot of the family, even Moiley daughters milking there now and even the mother is still there and she have daughters, she have granddaughters and she have great granddaughters so no, it's just, look, like I said, a bit of luck and as I say, hopefully the breeding is improving a bit as well. So, there's, there's no doubt about that yeah, when you look so, through the herd profile. Yeah, so. There's a lot, a lot of very good and very high EBI cows here that I know yeah. we in Eurogene are delighted to be working with it. Anyway. I know, she look as quite successful for us. Yeah, so I know, hey, look as I said, is that's the kind of cow we're breeding and it suits us. So look, we're happy enough with the kind of cow we're breeding and if it breeds a, a bull or two for the ice station, all the better. It is a bonus, like, so it is. Oh.